<clears throat> we live. So I just had a real good build with a brother. And he's actually from uh, the West Coast. And I said, you know what? Now I'm mentoring him. It's one of the last mentorships that I'm doing. And we wound up building about quite a few things. Children, relationships, parents that's broken up but still have to connect with the child. And also the conflict thereof. And so I was building with him so so much that I said, man, you know what? Go on Facebook. Let me just give this to everybody. Let me build with everybody because truth for the matter, this is a good conversation and it's a switch from what I'm traditionally talking about. And of course, you know, I do have several female counterparts that I'm in a relationship with and I've been with them for over a decade. So some people may be credentialed, whatever that means, in order for them to give advice for relationships. But I find oftentimes we're going to set some rules tonight. This is a late stream. I hope y'all on East Coast is with it. Because we got to put some work in. <clears throat> we got to talk about. And I know everybody's probably on the other side of things saying my counterpart is the one starting all the trouble. So we just going to pretend everybody here is the one that doesn't really start all the trouble. And we're going to give the people who are not troublemakers advice for how to deal with the troublemakers. <laughs> all right. That's what we're going to do. And so what we need to first establish is this. <clears throat> we got to establish. Where are the rules of engagement? That's what causes the problems. See, we're going to jump right into this. So one of the main issues that men and women particularly have is pinpointing how did this all start here's one of the issues advice y'all and this is what i was going to say hold up. number one advice be wary of advice you get from people who are not in relationships about your relationship that's number one walk with me rule number one someone can anyone can give you good advice but consider the fact that you may want advice if you do get advice from people who are not only in relationships, but they like their relationships and you believe that they like their relationship. This is important because some people may even be in relationships and that still doesn't give them the past. So what I like to say is I feel I'm credentialed based on years of experience. And the ignorant part is that there's people on planet Earth who would like to believe that, oh, you know, I don't care how much relationships you're presently in and how many of them are successful. They ain't got nothing to do with me. And so that may be true. But we're dealing with the law of average here. We're dealing with the law of probability. So it's best to get information or advice from people that are in long-lasting, healthy relationships. The key word tonight is going to be healthy. Keyword, healthy. That's the key word. Here's another issue. Who is right? Who is wrong? Stay the heck away from those words. The word is healthy. This is not healthy. I don't feel this is healthy. Use that word. Because once things become about right and wrong, people get on the defensive. What you want to start labeling what's going on in a more accurate form and less offensive it means is to say I don't think this is healthy and the reason I don't think this is healthy because we're both going to get upset both our tempers we don't need to yell we don't need to scream this isn't healthy that approach I don't believe is healthy because I get riled up when I'm approached this way but we don't want to touch right or wrong or good or bad, we're going to use the word healthy from now on when we're having conversations. Something is healthy or it's not healthy. That's what we want to deal with because people haven't abused the word health enough. People have not abused the word health enough for people to, what do you mean healthy? But if you say, that was wrong, or I was wrong, then you know what normally happens. Someone's going to find where you was wrong first. Then you got to find where they was wrong behind that. Then they got to find where you was wrong before that. That's so annoying. And we all know 
it's annoying. Because we're going to keep going back. Next thing you know, and you know what I hate that takes place in an argument that's not fair. This is what y'all got to do now. This is advice. You are going nowhere if when someone presents something to you as a problem, and then the person comes back and presents six other problems, avoids the one problem you have, and gives you six other problems. You got to be careful with that. Be careful with that. That happens. I'm going to tell you what to do when that happens. And you really can't do much. Because if you're dealing with the type of person that when you tell them you have a problem, they start bringing to you all your problems. You need to know how to evacuate that situation because those people generally don't even want you to leave. They want you to stay there and listen for all six problems they're going to throw on you when you only have one problem. So you got to know how to deal with this situation the best way. Healthy is the word. Also, when you say you got a problem and then someone brings all of the problems to you because they get on the defensive and you say, yo, I just, I just want to talk to you about this. Now, this is the trick. You're supposed to be able to be open to communicate with your partner. But what happens to most of us when we do communicate what we're upset about, we normally get the backlash for presenting it to that person. Remember that. You got to understand how to move when this stuff happens. You got to stick and move. Stick and move. This is boxing. This is intellectual sparring. You got to really be prepared for this. And don't you dare tell the person that you told you had one problem that's now bringing on to you a bunch of your problems. Because the problem is this. If everybody got a dang problem, then ain't nothing's going to be answered and y'all going to start yelling over each other. You know why? Because if you said, I have a problem with this, and it's not properly being addressed, analyzed, or even looked into, because that person says, well, pfft, I got a problem with you. And then you say, this is not fair. I'm the one presented the problem to you. We're not even discussing my problem. Now you're bringing your problem on me. Now two people got problems, and neither one of them is going to be, to be addressed because the first person is like, I'll be damned if I'm going to answer to your problem. I'm the one told you I got a problem. Now, one of you most times happens to be more logical than the other person. The perpetrator is normally the same person all the time. I don't know what side of this you're on, but what we're going to do, whoever side you're on, we're going to make sure everyone can pinpoint how to diffuse this negativity. This is what you must do. And don't nobody want to be called illogical in the middle of the conversation either. So just leave that alone too. That doesn't work. I have years of experience knowing calling people illogical is just the worst <laughs> idea on planet Earth. Do not say someone is not acting logical. Leave it alone. And do not give them the credit of being too emotional. Because emotion is a very high form of intelligence. We don't want to use emotional no more. Guess what we're going to use? Healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy. This is healthy. We don't think about health. You know why? Because the second your health starts depleting, you're in a bad situation. You guys don't want to, <coughs> pardon me, you guys, just think about it. You guys don't want to make each other sick. So we got to focus on health throughout the course of the situation. And it may pain you to allow the other person that you said, hey, I have an issue. To speak more than you when you're the one bringing only one issue to the table. You have to find a way to respond to probably four or five things. So what you need to do if you understand the person that you're dealing with, you need to already come with a pen and pad prepared. And this may annoy people, but if you know you're dealing with the type of person who has a tendency to compound interest... Once they start telling you they got a problem, they start telling you they got five or six problems. You know what you want to do? You want to tactfully consider all six. And you want to ask if you have the right to respond to all six uninterrupted. Because what normally happens is once you start responding to the first one, that becomes another argument before you get to problem two, three, four, five. I'm telling you, I know these people on planet Earth, they're walking around all over the place. Trying to say. Who? I ain't talking about nobody right now. I ain't mentioning no names right now. I'm not mentioning no names because it wouldn't be healthy. <laughs> it would not be healthy. What I'm telling you is these are conversations that need to be had in our community. These conversations absolutely positively have to be addressed in our community because we're having arguments with no resolution. Okay. Uh, a lot of appreciation goes the right way. We, a long way. We have this thing that 
on other instances, we feel like, well, someone didn't do what I want them to do, so I'm going to spite them. We got that going on in the black community, too. I'm going to spite this person because they're not doing things the way I want them to do it. Then you know what? Forget it. I'm on some other stuff. We don't have the right to tell that person that that's not right. We can identify the fact that it's not healthy, at least for you, the victim, because you're the victim of that. But you don't even want to tell them you're being victimized by them. This is just us having this conversation now. <clears throat> what do we do? Well, here's the problem. Let me tell you where the problem stems from. And this, is, this will fix all problems. And the reason why I know this will fix all problems is because in my healthy relationships, this is what keeps us in a state of solitude. People don't like rules. People don't like regulations. People don't like them. They, don't, they hate it because people want to be out of control. But you can't be rapacious. You can't be greedy. It's a give and take. Both sides get to give and take. See, when you say give and take, you'll be thinking one side. No, both sides give and take. It's an exchange. It's chemistry. So hydrogen is very explosive and oxygen is very explosive. But you can take these two explosive chemicals, right? And you put them together, or gases. You put them together and then guess what happens? In the right combination, they form a molecule that provides sustenance. So a lot of times, both parties uh, create explosions by themselves. But with enough cohesion in the right amounts, y'all can do something very special. So how do we solve our problems? Here's one approach, but unfortunately, you can't really solve problems by yourself. You can prolong it until people grow. But you got to see what's really going on with people. Because some people in their head, they're going to always be right. And you got to decide if you're willing to be with somebody who can't see themselves for who they are. You got to really decide, can I be with somebody who's having a problem seeing themselves for who they are? Or some people see themselves for who they are with two week delays or one month delay. Like a month later, they come back, yo, you know what? I started really thinking. That was crazy. You're like, a month later... We got new problems now. I got to wait another month for yesterday's problems and last week's problems. So you got to decide where you are patience-wise. Here is the explanation for my brother out there. <clears throat> Number one thing to solve the problem. The two of you have to have a point of reference that you agree upon for how you solve problems. And every time there's an issue, you got to decide like, yo, okay, can we both agree we don't like how this gets solved? What can we do from this point forward so the rules of engagement is legitimized? Because guess what? The way someone solves a problem is their personal right. Even if you think it's very immature, even if you think it's very childish, even if you think it's very negative, or even if you think it's very disrespectful. The world is different. And unfortunately, guys and women are different. And I'm going to tell you this. The reason why... Guys may be, consider themselves to be more on the logical level <clears throat> in certain communities and cultures. It's because the way they've been edified. So there's a culture here. There's a cultural embedding. The women grow up under a certain female culture, even though they're black. And then the guys grow up in their own female culture and their own male culture, even though they're black. And both grow up with their reservations, depending on the demographic from which they derive and different types of activities. So, say for instance, the guys from my demographic, we normally come up and we indulge in some kind of knowledge of science of God and all this other stuff. We're God, we, we do the knowledge. And then the women don't necessarily really find themselves on average, like the men find themselves on average, doing the knowledge, the supreme mathematics, the supreme born Allah and all these other names. Born Max D and all these other cats' names, you know? We, we know we don't got, we don't, the sisters don't only get into that. Those organizations are filled with men, predominantly. And no, not to nobody, but, you know, whether you're Hebrew is like, whether you're the Nation of Gods and Earths, <clears throat> Nation of Gods and Earths, uh, Black Panthers, whatever. These, these organizations are mainly populated with guys. 
It's just true. So, to this day, it's a high probability if anyone joins different types of black organizations, such as those ones, it's probably going to be guys. Okay? And so, when it comes to other things, you'll probably find the females there. Now, it doesn't mean females don't seek knowledge. They seek it in different ways, and there's a different culture. It's more the culture of men because of the style of our community and because of the persuasion of the leaders, which impels more guys to be involved in those conversations than females. It's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. And when that happens, we got to remember everyone speaking, their talking points is from the perspective from which they've been edified and what they qualify to be true. Understand, that's where everyone's talking points are from. We're speaking from everything which represents the summation of all of our experiences. When we go into debates, when we go into those dialogues, does it mean all women can't have that conversation? No, there's women who go hard. There's women who commit the knowledge to memory and do whatever they do, whatever it is they subscribe to. Please don't take it out of context. We got to be for real here. Women have a culture and men have a culture. And it ain't the same culture, even though they're the same race from the same demographic. That's a problem. The men have a culture and the women have a culture within the same community and their cultures contradict each other. I'm not saying the men only do knowledge. The men also want to go into prison more than they want to go to prison. The men are more likely to drop out of school. The women are more likely to stay in school. Our wires is totally different. We're wired differently, people. The women are wired differently. The men are wired differently. It's causing us the conflict. It's a fact. Like it or not, the women have a path, the men have a path. Like it or not, the men come in with reservations about women because of their men groups that they don't really talk to women about. And then the women have reservations from just watching women and listening to women disgruntled and baffled about men and what they're doing and why they do it. So by the time the two of them meet, they both already don't trust each other in the first place. And you can't just get rid of that. Now, what if you've evolved and you've come into the know of what black people need and we need to get better than that, we need to trust, doesn't mean that that person has gotten on that level yet. So they will still revolve around tricks or testing you in ways that makes you upset. Who knows? Some people really are still part of that world or that matrix, even though they may be with you a conscious sister or be with you a conscious brother. Their brain still may be on the tricknology that they was taught when they was in the world. So the manner in which they respond to adversity, they may digress and go back to the activity. <clears throat> they may go back into the nigger mentality. And I'm just using that to really emphasize how dirty it gets. Everybody's conscious until we finally have a problem. Then we digress and we go back like we on the streets and we children again in our circles from where the women learned about men in the worst ways and the men learned about the women in the worst ways and we start banging on each other. Facts. So here's what we must do. First of all, we got to have a point of reference. We have to have a point of reference. And what is that point of reference we got to have? Well, the point of reference that we got to have is what the heck exactly do you study? What do you subscribe to? What do you agree upon? <clears throat> that has to be the foundation of that relationship. It has to be the foundation. And if it's not, one of you has to understand that the other one doesn't really have a point of reference. So when there's a problem, they're not pulling. Well, everyone always has a point of reference. Let me say this. Everyone has a point of reference for what they should do when confronted with relationship adversity. Everyone has a point of reference. The problem is some people's point of reference may be waiting to exhale, love and hip hop, and a whole bunch of other shows. Now, what does that mean? If you watch anything long enough and you listen to anything long enough, you're being indoctrinated, whether you realize it or not. So if you're watching a bunch of these TV shows where the men and the women are in a point of contention and you're always seeing the men cheat, and you watch these TV shows where 
that men just really don't respect women. And you listen to music where the conversation is, I'm sad because this relationship wasn't working out. They understand, this is a culture that's very appealing to people that are sad. So long as you're sad, people love the music. Man, that song is good. So long as there's some conflict and strife about relationships, man, that show is good. That's my favorite show. So guess what? You're going to start acting out the role of the characters on the show. You watch it so much that when you wind up in a situation where someone's trust is in question, you're going to behave like the characters on that show. The ones that you like the most normally represent the part of you you've been wanting to come to the surface, but you just normally don't do that. And one day you get into a conversation with your man or with your wife, and you start acting the role of what you listen to day to day or what you watch day to day. It's education at the end of the day. If I read and I study every day, I'm going to respond to adversity based on that which I read and study, which occupies my mind. If I watch TV and I listen to music day to day more than I read and I study, chances are the way I respond to my relationship adversity is going to be predicated upon the data that I'm constantly consuming or saturating my mind with from watching TV, from listening to music. That's how you respond. These are facts. You're going to respond to the problems in your relationship based on the music and other forms of media that you consume day to day. Number one thing, if both of you are going to strive, both of you must read. It's true. What happens when one of you is constantly reading and studying every day, meditating and breathing every day? What happens if one of you is doing that? You're the one that's going to get more sick than the other person because the other person is used to banging. The other person is used to cursing, screaming, hitting, wilding out. Because that's how they do what they do. The other person over here is on Kumbaya. Like, you're over here meditating, praying, breathing, reading the most amazing information ever about gaining more consciousness. You're going to have hell. Because your expectations for how that person is going to respond to you is going to be based on that which you consider to be facts. So you're going to consider that this person should know better. But guess what? Who's doing all the reading and the studying every day? If you're the woman doing all the reading and studying every day, or if you're the man doing all the reading and studying every day, your point of reference for how you should respond to this adversity is going to be a lot more intelligible than that of the likes of the other person who's not reading, who's not studying, who's not meditating, who's not praying, and they would like to pretend... Oh, I am reading on the side and praying. No, let's be for real. One of you is obviously reading and studying more, and that's why one of you is having more hell. The other one is having a different type of hell because they haven't allotted themselves the opportunity to develop that part of their human faculty to know how to respond intelligibly to adversity. Their point of reference is going to be the people they hang around, the shows that they watch and the music that they listen to, because that's all their education. And the other person is reading and studying and meditating and praying. And then that person gets together with that person. And when you have a problem, it's going to be very flammable. And you know why it's going to be very flammable? It's going to be very flammable because y'all both have different reference points for how to solve these types of problems. Conversation. Like, let's say someone deals with the Declaration of Innocence, the 42 laws of my eyes. And they say, man, this is what I'm about. It tells you, you should not raise your voice. You should not yell. You should not scream. You should not deny truth when confronted with it. You see, it tells you these things. Even rapacious. You shouldn't be rapacious. You shouldn't be greedy. So if you're, if you're taught, you shouldn't make another person cry. So if you concede to the fact that this is true and this is your lifestyle and this is your point of reference then you walk into this conversation and you catch yourself and you mm -hmm. say man you know what what it says too low yeah be back on y'all can hear me now was he hearing anything all the time they should have been right <clears throat> okay all right cool oh you know what when your finger goes here that's what happened last time you mm -hmm. blocked the sound so you got to make sure your finger doesn't go under it. You good? All right. Y'all digging it? Y'all like it? Press 9 if you're feeling it so far. Press 9 if you're feeling it. Hmm? 
Press nine if you're feeling it. Nine. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Wow. Some spitting fire. <clears throat> so, we learn we do not fall deaf to words of truth. We do not fall deaf, pardon me, deaf to words of truth. We will not yell, we will not scream, we will not cause pain or injury to other people. If this is if this is what's in your mind, then you say, you know what? I believe this to be true, and I believe this is gonna make me a better person. So from now on, I'm following this truth. And you may have your partner here, you, on on a good day, you build with your partner. And your partner's like, you know what? Word. That's real talk. That's true. So now you think you both agree with this. So now it's all good when you identify with the truth when you're happy. But do you digress when you're confronted with adversity? Do you digress when you're confronted with adversity? That's the question. And many of you, for, I'm not going to say for lack of a better term, it's always a better term. But as a popular saying, many of you, many of you will lose your religion when stuff hits the fan. What I'm saying is, don't become less than yourself for nobody. And if you realize you was out of character... Even though you know that person's going to say, yup, yup, you did that, yup, then you're absolutely right. Because that's not me. You don't want to be less than yourself because somebody else is behaving like themselves. That's what they do. You got to come into acceptance that this is what people do. People are going to do things based on their level of knowledge and how much they want to develop themselves. You got to come into the acceptance of that. And you got to decide how much patience you're going to have for that person to develop themselves into a better person. Now, of course, this is all in your head. Because if you dare try to tell that person you want to be patient enough to wait for them to become a better person, they may not be able to handle that. And sure, they don't give a damn if you read every day. And, and I mean, not just read anything. It's not sex novels. They don't care if you're reading progressive information every day, if you're studying progressive information every day, if you're making applicable this progressive information every day. They don't care if you're doing philanthropic things. They don't care if you're praying, if you're meditating, if you're introspecting. They don't care if they see you literally doing your best to develop yourself day to day. And they become your challenge to make sure you don't digress from your spiritual growth. Don't nobody care about that. Once they think you're wrong, you're wrong. And many people feel you deserve to be treated whatever way they deem necessary. They're not thinking to themselves, you know what? Neither one of us should deal with each other in a negative way. They're not saying that to themselves because that's not what they study. That's not what they read. That's not what they into. They got a different doctrine they're following. And if you were to ask them, where is this doctrine coming from where you got the right to deal with people like this? They just tell you, so what? I do what I want to do. You deserve it. Like, this is really what people say on planet Earth. They, they have no answer for what they're doing, so they just tell you, so? This is what I do. You don't like it? And you got to be in your mind, and, and you be looking like, yo, is this person for real? Like, yo. And you know what? You'll start losing your mind and thinking, yo, now you angry. But you're not going to beat them in that world. That's their world. I know it's hard. Yo, take the higher road. I don't want to say corny stuff like that to you. What I want to say is you can build a reputation for 10 years and lose it in one moment. This is how spirituality is. You working on yourself to be a better person, <clears throat> you got to be careful. Sometimes one of the best things you can have in your life is to have somebody that challenges you. But not over and over to the point where you're at risk. Will constantly have to rebuild yourself up because if you're with somebody that makes you turn around and deviate from everything that you know is positive everything that you say you know what this is true i want to live good and you go a day good and you go another day good and next thing you know boom i gotta start over you almost complete a day boom i gotta start over if you know this is what you're dealing with and you don't see that that person is making an effort to grow then you gotta move on because that person is toxic now, that's another, that's also how you solve the problem. But I don't want to come on the stream today and tell everybody you need to break up. Fight, especially if you got children. Fight and keep it alive. But if you find that it's too difficult for you not to lose yourself 
from what you're working on. Because I'm telling you, people got issues, man. And it's not your issues. People got issues. And they are hell-bent on solving their problems the way that it can never get solved over and over. You know, people are addicted to negativity. People are addicted to doing things the unhealthy way. We're not going to call it wrong. People are addicted to doing things in ways that... <clears throat> Obviously, they don't want to say, man, I know I, I know I'll be tripping. Don't nobody want to really say they be tripping, except for the person reading and studying that they learn, yo, I got to admit, I was tripping. I got to owe up to it. I got to own it. This was wrong. I shouldn't raise my voice. I shouldn't talk loud. I shouldn't do this. This is what it is. We building ourselves up. But you don't want to be building yourself up so much that you get so angry from your expectation of somebody else that you start tearing them down. You don't want to tear the other person down either. Everybody got their own life path. That's what makes the relationship so tricky. Because you can't force your life path on somebody, no matter how good you think it is. And I'm not talking religion, family. I'm not telling you convert anybody. I'm just talking a general sense of, you know what, I shouldn't be yelling and screaming when I'm upset. I should be considering people's feelings when I don't like something. I'm talking that. I'm not even talking religion. I'm talking just general principle, GP or GP. You should be a certain way with people, I would like to believe, because that's what I learned. That's what I'm studying, and I feel that this would make me feel better and be better. And I think it would empower another person if they would allow me to deal with them in that manner, and so I could receive the same. But it doesn't mean, no matter how much logic you kick, if some of you really attempt to educate in the middle of your conversations for someone to tell you, I don't need no damn teacher right now. They just tell you they need a significant other. They don't need no damn teacher. Like, yo, I've heard and seen it all. I got so many different members and so many people I got to coach and mentor. No matter if I'm supposed to coach them in mentors and economics. Yo, once they, 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 yo, the relationship is throwing people off on planet Earth. At the end of the day, especially our community, we got to learn how to communicate with each other better. And the number one thing that you have to do is see if you're picking someone willing to read with you. And I know that sounds weird. <clears throat> Yo, this dude just said to see if I could go home and read with my wife. Yes. Don't trust her to read by herself. Sister, if you're the one reading, don't trust that man to read by himself. Open that damn book and read it together. Page one. The most positive book you can find. <laughs> the most positive book you can find. The one that says don't curse when you're angry. Get that book. If you need me to write one where the first page says don't curse when you're angry so I can publish it real quick so you can order it so it can land on your doorstep so you can read together. Rule number one, don't curse when angry. We don't want to curse each other because that's what we actually do. We are putting a curse on each other because it stays in our mind for the whole day. And then next time I see you when I leave for work and I come back home, I'm continuing right from the curse. Now I'm, I got a spell casted on me because all I can think about is all the negative things you said to me. And I got to go somewhere. Most of you are always late for where you got to go because when it's time for you to leave, that's when the arguments start, right or wrong. I know, y'all. We all black. We know what it is. We all black. We know what it is. Even the people in the best income is having these types of problems. But I'm telling you, I understand our people. We got to get the men and the women to work together, but the men and the women got to be willing to work together. So you got to figure out from the very beginning is your counterpart, be a woman or man, are they willing to journey or take that path with you together? Are they willing to grow with you? Doesn't mean you write about everything, so get that out of your head. But the, what you write about is studying together. Because while you're building all this information up, you're growing apart from the person that you love. If they're letting days go by, knowing that you're reading and you're studying and you're praying and you're meditating and you're introspecting, they don't know what you're going to be on next week. You're growing. If they're allowing you to keep growing.